Well, bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Listen, y'all, I'm singing a little Dora song today. We did it. We did it. We did it. Yay. We are on command number 49 of walking through the 49 commands of Christ with Pastor Lonnie. I'm your girl, Pastor Lonnie, and y'all, we hit it. Command number 49. I am so excited about this and I feel accomplished. Amen. Um, so command number 49, I will not hesitate, is let your heart not be troubled. Our scripture comes from John 16, 33. What a consolation this is. Amen. Um, and he says, Jesus says, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Amen. Listen, Jesus forgave you. He washed you in his blood. He cleaned you up. He filled you with his spirit. Um, he, he, he left you a guide in his word. Amen. He left you a helper through his spirit and a comforter through his spirit. Amen. He promised to never leave us nor forsake us. And it is a legit promise. He is always with us. Amen. When we are in him, we are, he is always with us. Amen. And so we hear that he told us that first of all, all of these things he said to us, all of these commands that he's given us, all of the instructions, all of the stuff that he said to us and taught us, he said that, you know, it's disturbing. Um, it, it could be scary, but when you are in me, you have peace. Why? Because although you're in the world and you will go through and have to deal with all of those things, I overcame the world by the cross. And so because you're in me and I overcame, you will overcome. How do I know that? Romans 8 tells us that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Amen. So when we in him, we win. Um, Proverbs 3 verses 1 through 12 tells us, listen, my son, Forget not my teaching, but have your heart comply with my commandments. Why? Because during that time when you're complying with the commands of God, he says for length of days and years of life and peace will be added to you. When we walk out these commands, when we follow the word of God, when we share them, when we love, when we do all of these things that we just talked about going through, when we're being disciples, when we're making disciples and baptism, when we're sharing the word, all of that stuff that we have gone through through these 49 commands, when we're doing that, it adds peace to us. I, I get some of my greatest peace in some of my triest times when I'm doing ministry, when I'm out, when I'm connecting and I'm helping other people. And, you know, it doesn't just take my mind off of what I'm going through that I have no control over, but it shows me, you know what? God will take care of that. If I seek him first, his kingdom and his righteousness, then all of that other stuff that concerns me that I have no control over, he'll take care of that. Let not my heart be troubled. Amen. So he's going to add length to your days and your years. Listen, peace brings you long life. I want to live to be, you know, strong, healthy, you know, 80, 90 years old. Some people don't want that. They say, you know, I, I, I want to live. But listen, if I got my health and my strength, I see some 90, 80 and 90 year old that have health and strength, that are strong, that are still vibrant, that are living, that are still doing the Lord's work. I want that to be my testimony. Why? Because I let not my heart be troubled and I rested in him and received his peace. He said, don't let kindness and truth leave you. Keep the word of God. It is truth. It is kindness. It is mercy. Amen. Micah 6 and 8 says that, you know, this is what God requires of us to do, do justly, love mercy, and to walk humbly with him. Amen. He says, take the truth and the kindness of his word. Bind them around your neck. Write them on a tablet of your heart. Listen. Psalm 119, thy word I have hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The word is our key. It is our help. It is our only option. We cannot fight the enemy in our own strength with our own ideologies and our own words and our own opinions. It is the word of God that brings the victory. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. He said, right, don't be trying to choke me up, devil, but get this word out. <clears throat> 
So you will find favor and good reputation in the sight of the of God and of man. <clears throat> Stop being afraid to use God's word in the spirit of honesty and truth. Do not be afraid to say what thus saith the Lord. <clears throat> Somebody says something and you have a scripture that is an appropriate response, use the word of God because when our words fail, his words always win. And listen, <clears throat> when we use them, we find favor and a good reputation, not just with God, but with man. They can't, man can't resist you know, the heart of God's word and what he's saying. And we saw that with Moses and Pharaoh. Pharaoh wanted to keep the people of Egypt captive. But listen, God said, go back to him and tell him what I said. And eventually that word turned the heart of Pharaoh to let the people go at the appropriate time. And yes, the wickedness came back to him, but the wickedness came back and an opportunity for God to um wipe, wipe them out. Amen. So we know what happened when they tried to cross the Red Sea behind the Egyptians. <clears throat> so he holds the heart of kings in his hand. Follow the commands and the word of the Lord, and he will make your path straight. Amen. We dealt with that already. The narrow path is the way to go. He says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your past. Amen. And again, when we acknowledge him, when we make sure that we commit our way to him, when we wake up in the morning, we're seeking his face. <clears throat> Amen. We're asking him to give us direction and give us clarity, uh, make clear our plans, um, all of those things. Because we, we, we make plans, but we have to commit those things then to God. You know, Lord, this is what I would like to do, but I'm open to whatever you're doing today, tomorrow, and any day. Amen. <clears throat> and my heart won't be troubled with what you're asking me to do because I know that if I'm doing it in you, I have peace. So in everything that we do, remember Colossians 3.23 says we do it as unto the Lord. So in all our ways, we're acknowledging him. He's making our path straight. We are not, he, he says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. <clears throat> it will be healing to your body and refreshment to your bones. Listen, when we follow his word and we turn from our wicked ways, and that does not mean that we become perfect, amen, but it means that those things that are hindering us and, um, <clears throat> preventing us from moving forward in Christ. Are the things that we are eliminating, those things are idols. Anything that comes before God in our lives is an idol. Amen. <clears throat> so it is him first at all times. Um, uh, um, it, it brings healing to your body, refreshment to your bones. We wonder why we got sickness because we're doing our own thing. We're not following God. We we really struggling, um. But we but if we know that we commit our way to Him, you know, He has us. Honor the Lord from your wealth and from the first of all your produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. Amen. While we're doing this um corporate Daniel fast, we're also doing a financial fast, and um. <clears throat> You know, I'm, I've committed now to putting a couple of dollars away every week to the side that at the end of this financial fast, that I will be able to sow a first fruit seed um, to the Lord um, for bringing me through the fast, for the vision and revelation and clarity and insight and all of the stuff that he's pouring out during this time of fasting, the healing and restoration, my family, like just so much. And so <clears throat> along with the fast, I want to be able to give my first fruits offering, um, just to say thank you, you know, my first fruits of the year, um, that I give to him that he would, <clears throat> he would bless. And he says that, you know, when we honor him with our wealth, we pay our tithes, we give our offerings, man, when the people of God bless you, men and women of God bless you, bless them back. The Bible tells us that they give out of, give to us out of our spiritual, <clears throat> And we give them, we give back to them out of our, um, out of our earthly and our natural sustenance. Amen. And so, um, they are worthy. The Bible says the men and women of God who study and, uh, in the, in the word and labor and, and doctrine, um, are worthy of double honor. Amen. So we give them honor with the honor <clears throat> of receiving the word for them and the honor of, um, giving back to them for the time that they took to bless us with that word. 
He says, when we commit um, our wealth to him and our, our first of our produce, that your first of your produce is your tithe, amen? 10%, if God gave you a dollar, all he asked for back is a dime. And when <clears throat> you give him back that dime right off the top, he blesses the other 90 cent that you have. And many times we, we look at it and we say, I can't afford to tithe. And the truth is you can't afford not to tithe, amen? Giving back to the Lord is essential. Um, a little leaven, leaven if the whole lump, just like a little bit of sin messes up everything. You know, when you take that 10% and that tithe and you give it to God um, as, a, as your tithe, as your obedience, um, as your offering to him, he blesses the whole 100. So that 90% that you have left, he will stretch it. You think that you can't, but I promise you that if you do all of those things that you worried about <clears throat> that need to be taken, I'm not talking about your wants. I'm not talking about the red bottom shoes. I'm not talking about, you know, buying a BMW. I'm talking about the things that you need because God promised to provide us our need according to his riches and glory. And then, you know, the blessing of what we want you know, we get those along the way. He's gracious enough to give those to us. <clears throat> but when we honor him with that tithe, he blesses everything. And you will not go without. Now, listen, you don't have to take my word for it. Try it. You know, when you receive, give your tithe. Give your 10%. Um, and people ask, well, I'm not going to get into that. We'll talk about tithing on another thing. We're talking about letting our hearts not be troubled. But the promises of God are yea and amen in him. And so our hearts are not troubled because we know that what we need, he's going to provide for us. Um, and then he says, um, uh, <clears throat> when you do that, your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Listen, you will lack for nothing. My son, do not reject the discipline of the Lord or loathe his rebuke. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, just as a father disciplines the son in whom he delights. Listen, you discipline your children because you love them, amen, not because you want to be mean to them, and they don't understand that. Later on, we understand the concept of that when we have our own children or when we're, you know, adults, we begin to under understand the concept of that. But let me tell you something. God's chastening is not condemnation. Amen. It is not casting you out. It's not, it's not wiping you out. It's not saying, I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore. The chastening of God is to bring us to a place of repentance. The chastening of God is to correct us. Amen. Is to bring us to a place of revelation of our wrongdoing. Amen. That we might repent and get back in right standing with God. The last thing he wants to do is cut us off. And that should be apparent by the mercy and the grace that he gives us every day. So listen, stop worrying, stop fretting about uh, being a Christian. You know, we, we, we love to profess it. You know, we love to tell people, you know, we believe us, but the things that we're required to do, we're afraid to do those things because we're afraid how man and people will respond. But this scripture just told you, let not your heart be troubled. Um, Proverbs three just told you that you will have favor and a good reputation with God and man do what the Lord told you to do. Do. Amen. And that is it. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes, listen, our hearts, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Sometimes we are worried about things that we shouldn't be worried about. Why? Because Ecclesiastes 3 and 11 says that he's made everything appropriate in its time. We're concerned about stuff. God may have given us a glimpse or showed us something or we sense or discern something. And, you know, we all over that thing now and we're getting frustrated because we can't figure it out. But now might not be the time he makes everything appropriate in its time. Slow down. Be patient. Let not your heart be troubled. Don't worry about the things that are beyond your control. He says he has also set eternity in the heart of men without the possibility that mankind will find out the work in which God has done from, from the Eat from the end, from the beginning, even to the end. Amen. So we have all of these deep desires and longings and passions that God has put in us that connects, connects us to him. And we're trying to reach and grasp for those things, but now might not be the appropriate time. Let not your heart be troubled. Just continue to pray about it and ask God to show you when is the time. Show me when to do this. Listen, there are things that are on the table. I feel like right in front of me on the table right now now and I feel like I need to make a decision or I need to be doing something about this <clears throat> but I am 
I am waiting on the Lord's appropriate time. Amen. And so while I'm waiting on his appropriate time, I'm not letting my heart be troubled. I'm learning about these things. I'm studying about these things. I'm reading up on about these things. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm being alert and aware on how God is moving and shifting people and who he's bringing to my life and the connections and the resources and partnerships. Like I'm taking note of all of that stuff now. Amen. As it's going along because I'm watching him put the plan together. Let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Pray and talk to him. He has you. He has put that desire and that longing in your heart for a reason, but now might not be the appropriate time. And he's not going to give us um, the, the full laid out plan from beginning to end. No, continue to read his word. Look at, remember, he said to Abraham, Abraham, go, leave your father's house, you know, take what you have and leave your father's house and go to a place that I ain't even going to tell you. Just start walking. I'll let you know when to stop. And Abraham did that. And God blessed him. And not only was he blessed, but he became the father of faith. Amen. For it, it's by his faith faith, amen, that um, kept him going. So it is by our faith. Our faith says our hearts are not troubled because we trust in our God. We lean not to our own understanding, amen. We acknowledge him in all of our ways and allow him to direct our paths. Why? Because Jeremiah 29 and 11 says he knows the thoughts that he thinks toward us. Thoughts of good and not evil to bring us to an expected and a Man, listen, let not your heart be troubled. And when your heart is troubled, I need you to go back to the 49 commands. Look at what's troubling your heart. Remember that little, um, the little magnifying search in your little Bible app or your online Bible that you go to. Do the search. What is your heart, heart troubled about? You grieving? Is it death? Is it loss? Is it finances? Is it is your children? Is it your marriage? Listen, go look up that word and go to the word of God and study it and see what God says about it and trust him on that. Begin to speak that word over your life. Speak these commands over your life. Amen. I love you guys so much and I'm so excited for the next study that we're going to do. Again, I think it's going to be the promises of God, but I'm not 100% sure yet. Listen, I'll drop the bomb on you next Monday. Amen. I can't wait to resume our next study. Now, with that being said, and all of that talk about devotional and making sure that you're declaring over your life, go to my website and check out my devotional, the 21... Um, the Possibilities of God, 21 Days of Faith Devotional. And in that devotional, you will um, get a daily scripture, a word of encouragement, um, a prayer, and a daily declaration to speak over your life, to increase your faith. Why? Because faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so we have to speak these things out loud. Yes, there are times where you just, you know, you quietly pray or you pray within yourself or in your heart like Hannah did. <clears throat> in um in First Samuel two, you know, but there are other times where you have to boldly declare and speak the word of God over your life, over your family, over your finances, over your future. Amen. So the 21 days um, of faith, possi the possibilities of God will definitely be a blessing in helping you do that. Amen. And then just take a look at my website. Go on back. Walk through the 49 commands. All of these videos are on there ready for you to access and um, and be strengthened by. Amen. And uh, to, to equip yourself. Um, so I'm so glad. Please listen, do me a favor. If these 49 commands really, really, really have blessed you, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Not just visit my website, but go to my website, subscribe, leave a comment um, in the blog section. Um, let me know. Let me know how it's blessed you. Um, and if it's blessed you, leave a comment down at the bottom of this. Um, I thank you guys so much. Those of you that have commented so far, my girl Tanya Goodwine, T, I love you so much. You know, we go we go way, way, way back. And um, I love you to life, girl. And um, all of you that are on uh, my sunshine, Sister Marie, I thank you. You guys encourage me and keep me going. And I don't want to start calling names because I'll, you know, I don't want anybody to be offended. But I want you all 
all to know that I love you deeply from my heart. And that is why I do, you know, what I do. Yes, I do it because, you know, I want my relationship to be right with God. And yes, I do it because he's called me to do it. But I do it because I love you. And I know what I experienced through my giving my life over to the Lord. And, um, you know, after I gave my life to the Lord, I was a little annoyed. And I had to share with my mother and my sister you know, that I was a little annoyed because they had gotten saved years, you know, before I had. And, you know, people have a tendency to say to you, oh, you need Jesus. Oh, you know, he'll do that. But never really elaborate and tell you the real, real, real effect um, that he will have on your life, on your soul, on your spirit, on everything. Amen. On your perspective, on <clears throat> your experiences. And so um, I just said to them, you know, to me, the only way that I can describe it in a way that people will be able to understand is to say, you know, you see a really, really, really good movie. And when you come out of that movie theater, you're calling your friends, you're talking to people and you like, yo, did you see so-and-so like you create, you know, we got, we got Facebook pages, amen, behind the, behind the scenes and in the back, from the back row, I belong to some of them, amen. And we talk about great movies that we've seen, but how often do we really talk about the great testimony and um, that Christ has given us in our salvation? And so for me, you know, um, <clears throat> of course I was very forgiven, um, but to me it is like um, he is the best experience that I have ever had and it has been far from perfect and I have had many ups and downs and many challenges and um, I have lost people that I loved um, and I've had to um, distance from relationships with people that I have absolutely loved, that I absolutely love, including my own family and my own children, amen, as sometimes, and some people may say that that's crazy, but when Jesus talked, um, when, the, when the man came and he said, um, you know, let me go bury my father and then I'll come follow you. Uh, he said, Jesus said, let the bed, dead bury their dead. Amen. That whoever follows me must be willing to forsake all. Um, and so you forsake all, not letting your heart be troubled because he's a restoring God. He's a healing God. And what he's doing in you is not just to benefit and heal you, but it is to benefit and heal the masses that are around you and that are connected to you. So um, I had to step away for a long time, but I'm realizing now that, um, you know, he set me apart for that season and I just feel uh, a fresh life and a renewal that um, he's re reconnecting and restoring um, old relationships that were severed. Um, the enemy thought it was for his evil, but God will work it out for the good so that many lives might be saved. And so I am so grateful. And so I'm, I say all of this to say to you, we've walked through these 49 commands of Jesus Christ. Set yourself aside to um, continue, go back, start from the beginning, study them, see God's word, um, look at your life as he reveals your flaws and your <clears throat> imperfections and um, as he takes you back to experiences that damaged you and hurt you, use his word because it will heal you. Amen. The Bible says that his word healed for, went forth and it healed them and it delivered them from their destructions. We have we have destructive behaviors and destructive habits and destructive appetites that need to be destroyed. Amen. And the word of God is the only thing that will do that. And so I just thank y'all for giving me these extra couple of minutes. And so um, if you um, have been running, uh, if you have um, felt the unction of God on your heart um, during these 49 commands and you say, you know what, I want to give Christ a try. I am here right now to help lead you through the sinner's prayer. The only prayer that the God hears from the sinner is a prayer of repentance, which is why we always start with a repentant prayer. Amen. Acknowledging our sin. Um, and acknowledging that we are nothing without him and that we need him to have a right uh, relationship with God, acknowledging who Jesus Christ is and the work that he did on the cross and then receiving and accepting his spirit. Amen. And so if you are ready to do that, I am ready to pray with you. And it's as simple as this. 
I'm just saying, Heavenly Father, I thank you. Thank you for your mercy and thank you for your grace that has kept me and allowed me to get to this moment of repentance, Lord. I acknowledge that I am a sinner and there is no good thing that lies within me. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross for my sin. He died on a cross just for me, even in my mess, so that I can be reconciled to a right relationship with you. But well, Lord, I'm ready. I open my heart right now to receive an outpouring of your spirit. Forgive me of my sin that I've I've committed knowingly and unknowingly the things that I've done, said, and thought that have offended you. God, show them to me that I might correct my behavior, that I might correct, um, acknowledge, amen, uh, my behavior, and that uh, submit myself to your correction. Um, I thank you for your great love toward me that gave everything that you had, your only son, that I might... Uh, have everlasting life. Um, fill me. I thank you. And uh, I love you. Uh, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And now, again, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So now repeat after me. I am saved. Amen. Hallelujah. The heavens rejoice and I am excited. Oh, I am so excited. And so I ask you to please go back and walk through these 49 commands again. Um, um, tap in when I start the promises of God. You need to know those. Listen, I think that was one of the most helpful things that helped me in the beginning of my walk. In the beginning of my walk, the Holy Spirit just really led me to seek out the promises of God um, because there's you need something to hold on, um, hope to hold on to in the dark times, in the trials and tribulations. I don't know why it is trials and tribulations. Can't it just be trials or tribulations, but it is both, and <laughs> they are something else, but the word of God and the spirit of God will comfort you and guide you and help you through all of that, and not only will it help you, but it will heal you so that the next time you go back to that situation, the next time you're confronted with that behavior, you will respond with a God response, amen. I love you guys. Um, and I think that's it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless you for just another opportunity. Thank you for your word. Hallelujah. That corrects us, oh God. I thank you for your word. It is alive. It is quick. It is powerful. It is life. It is joy. It is health. It is strength. God, it is everything that we need and so much more. Give us a hunger and a desire and a thirst for more of it. For you said that they who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Fill us, Holy Spirit. We thank you so much for your word, and we will not let our hearts be troubled, but we will lean not to our own understanding. God, we will be patient, and we will align ourselves with your divine timing, not rushing anything or not slowing down anything, oh God, but being available and saying yes whenever you are ready. I thank you so much for the opportunity to use me, Lord. Every time I come before your people, let it be none of me and all of you. I thank you for this chance um, to help and to feed your sheep. Uh, I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you praise for allowing me to walk out these commands with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, I love you guys. Have an amazing day. And remember, when everything is failing out all around you, you know what to do. Just keep on faith in it. Be blessed.